Nguyen born 1381, known in Chinese as Huanan or Huanan was a Ming dynasty architect and hydraulic specialist between the first and fifth decades of the 15th century. According to some sources, he was a key architect in designing, planning, and constructing of the Forbidden City during the Ming dynasty. Born in Vietnam, he was taken as tribute to China and later became a eunuch and architect in service to the Chinese emperors. He, along with other architects, such as master designers and planners Kai Exian, Kui Xiang, Chen Gui, and Wu Zhong, was a builder of the Forbidden City in Beijing. During the Ming Dynasty's invasion of Vietnam in 1407, many Vietnamese professionals, such as poets, military experts, architects, engineers, etc., were captured and brought back to China. Among them was a prisoner named Nguyen An, one in Chinese, a man who would later design and oversee the construction of the Peking Citadel and the entire forbidden city of Beijing. Before being shipped to China, Nguyen A was a talented official under the rule of the Tran Dynasty. However, he was later taken by the Ming Dynasty and brought back to China as a gift from the illegitimate Ho Dynasty. From then on, he would be known in Chinese history as Wan An, a eunuch of the Ming's imperial court. For his talents, Nguyen A was given the task of constructing the Peking Citadel and the Forbidden City of Peking, Beijing. The size of his workforce was literally in the millions, composing of soldiers, workers, and prisoners. Interestingly, a large number of the laborers who worked on the Peking Citadel were also Vietnamese, captured by the Ming on their invasions. The fact that Wan An, Nguyen An was really a Vietnamese person had been obscured in Chinese history for centuries. It is only recently, with long and intricate research, did these facts began to surface. Research made by the University of Cambridge clearly states that the chief architect was an Annamese eunuch named Wan An, d. 1453, who also played a major role in rebuilding Peking. Annam is what Vietnam was referred to by the Chinese during this period, even though that was never our official name. Construction lasted 14 years and employed the work of 100,000 skilled artisans and up to a million laborers. The pillars of the most important halls were made of whole logs of precious Phoebe Jinnan wood, Nanmu, in the jungles of southwestern China. Such a feat was not to be repeated in subsequent years. The great pillars seen today were rebuilt using multiple pieces of pine wood in the Qing dynasty. The grand terraces and large stone carvings were made of stone from quarries near Beijing. The larger pieces could not be transported conventionally. Instead, wells were dug along the way, and water from the wells was poured on the road in deep winter, forming a layer of ice. The stones were then dragged along the ice. The floors of major halls were paved with golden bricks, baked with clay from seven counties of Suzhou and Songjiang prefectures. Each batch took months to bake, resulting in smooth bricks that ring with a metallic sound. Much of the interior pavings seen today are six-century-old originals. Soil excavated during construction of the moat was piled up to the north of the palace to create an artificial hill, the Jingshan Hill. Even before the palace was completed, Zhu Di moved to Beijing under the guise of touring and hunting. The administrative center of the empire gradually shifted from Nanjing to Beijing. 